Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? Welcome back to this week's market analysis, right? It's so good to be back, right? So you might have realized, right, uh, there wasn't the weekly videos over the last few weeks because, you know, I was busy with traders' fats, right? Preparing it, right? Liasing with the speakers, make sure, you know, things go well, no hiccup. And I'm glad to say, right, things went smoothly and I couldn't ask for, you know, a better, a better way of turning out. Okay, so anyway, that is over things is back to normal now and back to this week's market analysis, right? I want to share with you a, a few things, right? Number one, the best trading setups I'm looking at this week. Number two is, you know, often you hear, right? Traders telling you that you should risk 1% of your trading capital. But I would say, no, that's not entirely true because you still need to take into consideration this one important factor. And I want to share them with you or share this with you in today's video. Okay, so with that, right, let's begin. Okay, so the first chart that I want to talk about is Euro Dollar, right? This is a is a trend that has, you know, played out beautifully. And the thing is, a lot of traders that I know of, they are not on board this trade. Why is that? All right, let me walk you through their psychology when they look at this chart. At this point in time, right, they look at this chart and say, Oh man, look, right, the price is so high, it's approaching this area of resistance, right? I, I, I should be looking to short this market, right? I'm not going to long because it's so high already. And then what happened? The market breaks out, and continue trading higher. Then at this point, they'll say, yeah, man, look at this, you know, the price is overbought. If you pull out your RSI stochastic, it's, you know, way overbought, right? I, sh I shouldn't be going too long. Perhaps I'll wait for a pullback, a pullback towards this area of support, right? This is a, a better trade. And then the pullback didn't come, and the market continue trading higher. And now, at this point, right, you can see that, the market, you know, does somewhat of a, a, a flag pattern, sort of, right? And again, the same thought process is, you know, is going at the back of your mind. They'll, they'll look back at the chart, right? Man, you know, it's so high, right? Price, you know, I'm going long at this uh, 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 area of resistance, right? This is the highest point it can get, right? You know, I don't want to be long, right? Because, you know, it's not worth it. And then what happens is the market breaks out and continue trading higher. And now at this point, right, we have another group of traders, the same group of traders who would say, uh, look at this, right, this in head and potential head and shoulders pattern. I mean, maybe, you can, maybe you can't see it here, right? but I go down to the four-hour time frame, right, you can see, oh, look, right, an in, uh, inverse head and shoulders pattern, right? Should I be long, right? I don't think so, right, because, you know, inverse uh, head and shoulders means that the market is about to collapse, right? I shouldn't be long. I'll either stay on the sidelines, wait for confirmation before I short this market. And, hey, you may be right, right? This could be the top, right, for all you know. But if you look at the price historically, right, it should appear to you that you have been proven wrong multiple times already. Okay, so it's it's funny, right? Instead of, you know, f going with the trend, following the trend, you'd rather be shorting this market, you'd rather be on the sidelines, which somewhat, you know, doesn't really make too much of a sense to me, right? So as a trend follower for me, I stay with the trend. So I look at this no matter what chart pattern it shows, right? No matter how uh, uh, overbought it is, I'm still looking to long as long as, you know, it, it meets my trading plan. So my uh, my take is that, you know, this is an area of support that I would say it's worth, right? Looking for a long setup, right? If the price could get down lower, right? And get, give you a price rejection and then close higher over here, this would be a valid setup to me to go long, go long, right? So this is Euro dollar. Uh, daily time frame, it looks bullish to me. If you just pull out your 20 MA, it's still pretty much uh, above it. Okay, the, the trend is still strong, all right? Uh, I see it, this potential head and shoulders pattern over here, but it doesn't... If you look at the, the magnitude of this so-called head and shoulders pattern, right? This, right? Compared to the long-term trend that you have been in. Uh, it's funny that you want to give this chart pattern more weightage compared to this uh, long-term trend that you're in. I'm not saying that, you know, the market cannot reverse. There is the possibility of that. Anything can happen in the markets. But I'll, but to put, but where I'll put my money, right, is to go with the trend, okay? So with that said, that's uh, for Euro dollar, right? Hopefully you, uh, you kind of understand that, you know, how I trade trends and, you know, I don't really believe that the market is, you know, too high or too low to trade. So next one is dollar Canadian, okay? So dollar Canadian, let me just get rid of the moving average first. So 
from the look of this chart, it's clear that this market is in a downtrend, right? Lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, and lower lows. So an area that you could potentially want to trade from is this previous support that could turn resistance over here. So the market is somewhat forming a retracement, approaching this uh, 1, 2, 4, 3 level. So this is a level to look for short opportunities. So a couple of ways you can you can trade this, right? First one is perhaps, you know, a bearish reversal pattern when the market comes in. And then it smashes lower and the next candle, you know, basically close bearishly lower. That's one possibility. Another possibility is, you know, perhaps you go down to the one hour time frame. Right? You can't see this here, but yeah, the one hour time frame, right? I'm zooming out a little. As the market, you no know, continue trading higher, right? You can wait for a, a break of structure on this one hour time frame with the market. You know, as you can see on this one hour time frame, the market is in an uptrend. Higher highs and higher lows. So what you want to see is to wait for this higher highs and higher lows to be broken before you take a short setup. So for example, uh, let's you know hypothetically say that there is another higher low and a higher high and the market smashes lower, retraces, and then continue trading lower. So when it breaks this point over here, this would be a valid entry to go short. Because why? Uh, technically speaking, right, a trend should technically end when you know it no longer makes a higher high and higher low. So at this point, you have a lower high and lower low. So it makes sense to conclude that potentially, the long-term trend, which is on the daily time frame, the long-term trend, which is this daily time frame, right, has potentially resumed and you want to take a short trade back towards the downside. So two ways you can go about it, right, depending whether you want to trade off the daily time frame or you have more time on your hands, you know, you want to take a shorter-term trade and you can, you know, trade off the one-hour time frame. Okay, so that's for dollar Canadian. Another market to share is dollar Mexican. So I guess uh, I want to share is, is a lesson is this dollar Mexican is that, you know, you can see that this market, right, something is structurally changing. What do I mean by that is that if you look at this portion here, you notice that volatility has shrunk, right? Notice that the range that the market has been putting out is just contained between here and here, like these highs and lows. Okay, and when the market does this, right, the last thing that you want to do is to fade the breakout. So what do I mean by this? What do I mean by fade? When I say fade, I mean to go against. So let's say if the, the market, you know, let's say no doubt it is a downtrend. And the market, you no know, breaks out higher. And you think that, uh, man, it's a downtrend, I'm still going to short anyway. Be careful because, you know, when volatility shrinks, the next thing that it's likely to do is volatility expand because the, the market moves from a period of low volatility to high volatility. Okay? So no matter which direction it breaks out, you don't want to fade the move. All right, this is important because if you look at, uh, if you just look at your charts, right? Let me just, you know, go back in time and just share with you the charts. You see, right? Volatility, the market moves from a low, a period of low volatility to high volatility. Low to high. 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 A low to high volatility, low volatility, to high volatility, and uh, I would say here, low volatility, high volatility. Where else? And now we can so-called here somewhat, low volatility, high volatility, and now we are back here, low volatility. Okay, so the market now is clearly in a period of, you know, low volatility. And, you know, no matter what happens, whether it breaks up higher or lower, the last thing you want to do is to go against that uh, direction of the breakout, right? This is important. And if you know, if you want to trade with the trend, right, then needless to say, if the market can break below this swing low, right, if it break and close below it, right, then you can look to go short, right, in, an in anticipation of lower prices. Okay, so this is dollar Mexican, right? There's a, a two side to this uh, chart, right? Number one is to not, fade the volatility and number two is to you know uh to potentially trade the breakdown towards the downside and the last one that i want to talk about is oil oil let's have a look at brand crude oil so oil is interesting because if you you know you zoom out of this chart and you see it's basically right at the highs of a uh, 20 2016 right this is the highs of 2016 i believe and it's you know approach this level once again so at this point, right, clearly, right, nobody can tell whether, you know, this will be finally be the breakout that, you know, traders are looking for or this will just be another reversal back towards the downside. So this is why there is a market, right? You know, no two, 
no no traders can all agree what the markets can do. Some believe it's going to break out higher. Some believe that, you know, it's going to be a reversal. So what about me? What would I do? For me, right, I intend to, you know, stick with this uh, this current upswing, right? And I'm looking to plan a trade, right, on this four-hour time frame over here. What I'm seeing on this four-hour time frame is a potential, right, uh, this area of support, right? Previous resistance, then support, then support, then support. So if the market can come back down lower, right, and give me a, a false break setup, a price rejection or whatever, right, and you basically close higher after, you know, flushing out the stops below here, I'll be looking to go long, right? And in, the, in anticipation of higher prices, all right? So this is my plan for brand crude oil. If this can happen, I'll look to go long. Right, so this is uh, the brand crude oil, the daily time frame. So another market that is worth looking at because you know it's back at this uh, area of resistance, right, which is a uh, twenty sixteen high as well. So with that said, right, these are the the few setups that I'm looking at this week, and also I want to mention something, a term called psychological capital, which I think is very important for those of you who attended traders traders fest. You know what Elvin is talking about when he mentioned about psychological capital. So I'm sure you know, right, that when you trade, you should risk a small fraction of your account. You know, I think uh, many of times you heard uh, the 1% rule, the 2% rule. So, you know, it's fair enough, right, okay? If you risk 1% of your account, right, let's say your account is uh, $1,000, right, you should be risking $10. But where this psychological capital comes into play is that you must be able to endure the losses that come. You must be willing to risk money you can afford to lose. Because let's say, for example, okay, you you you, you borrow money from your friends and rel relatives to fund your trading account and up to a million dollars. And each trade, right, it's still the same 1%. It is still $10,000. But is this capital that you can afford to lose? Now, there's a difference, right, from $10, right, your own money to now $1 million. This $10,000 clearly is not capital that you can afford to lose. Clearly, your psychological capital is not ready for it, right? Maybe, perhaps, right, another example is that you win a lottery, right? Maybe, let's say, uh, $5 million. And again, you risk 1% on each trade, and 1% will be $50,000 on each trade. Again, you're still risking the same 1%, but you may not be able to execute your trade consistently because your psychological capital is not ready, right? The muscles, the, the, the psychological capacity that you have right now needs to be grown over time. You can't just blindly adopt the 1% rule and say, oh, I'm following my plan, right? I'm trading responsibly. No, because if your psychological capital is not ready, even if you risk 1% or 0.5% or even 0.1%, it could be too much for you, Okay. So I think this is important, right, to really understand what is your psychological capital limit, right? Do not trade beyond that limit because if you do so, you'll find yourself breaking your trading rules, right? Not following your plan all because your mental capacity is not yet ready to trade that sum of money. So my, my advice is, though, is to go small, scale down first, right? Go down to a level where you're comfortable with. So let's say you're perfectly comfortable, you know, risking $100 on each trade. So fair enough, you risk $100 on each trade. Okay, and of course, right, you want to be properly, you know, adequately, you know, funded. If you have $500, $500 in your account, $100 is way too much. So if you have, if you want to risk $100 on each trade, put like, you know, 5K or, or 10K in your account. Okay, so with that said, right, if $100 is your psycholo psychological limit, right, risk that $100, gain the consistency, gain the confidence, then slowly you move up, right, to maybe 150 10 to 200 then maybe to 250 300 500 1000 Slowly scale your way up, right? You cannot just blindly trade a, a nominal value just because, right, your account can withstand the risk management. It does not make sense because you have to think or take into consideration your own psychological capital. Okay, so this is important and it's the lesson that I want to leave with you, right, uh, for this week's video. Okay, so just a quick recap, right, what we covered this week. Number one, euro dollar, right? I'm bullish, right? And I said that, you know, just follow the trend, right? It's the path of least resistance. We talk about dollar Canadian, right? Bearish on this, looking for a potential short setup. Then we spoke about the dollar Mexican. I said that, you know, the market moves from a period of low volatility to high volatility and dollar Mexican is now a period of low volatility. So do not fade the breakout that happens, right? Because chances are, right, it could, it could sustain, it, the move could last for a while. Uh, the fourth market we talk about is oil, right? I'm bullish on it and looking for a, a long setup 
on the four hour time frame. And last but not least, right, the, the thing I spoke about is your psychological capital. Okay, this is so important, right? And you know, I wish I can ingrain into your brain, but you know, you want to be trading with capital that you're comfortable with losing, right? Don't just blindly follow that one percent risk management rule because sometimes the amount that derives from that one percent is still way too much for you to handle. So, okay, this is important, right? And with that said, I have come to the end of this week's market analysis. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to it. And, you know, if there's any question or feedback, just let me know below and I'll get back to you. So with that, I wish you good luck and good trading. I'll talk to you soon.